Here at Helmuth Ford, we are a small town dealership with no hassle and no pressure. Delta Fire and Rescue presents the Delta Haunted House at 109 North Center Street in Delta. Admission is just $10 per person. The Delta Haunted House is open each Friday and Saturday throughout October and on Halloween night from 8 to 10 p.m. Food and drinks will be available for purchase and now accepting cash and most major credit cards. It's the Delta Fire and Rescue Delta Haunted House, Fridays and Saturdays in October and on Halloween night. Welcome to the library with Miss Amanda here on Steve Shetland Media. Today, um, I'm going all spooky. Like tomorrow, well, I guess it is October already, so um, nobody should be complaining about me being spooky already. Um, I couldn't resist getting my spooky earrings and my spooky clothes and stuff out. Um, so hopefully you guys are into the spooky season too. The last week we were talking about horror movies, and my question of the week was... What is the highest grossing horror film of all time? Um, and it actually surprised me. I thought it would be um, an older film. Um, but the top five highest grossing, grossing horror films of all time, um, number five is The Exorcist, which, uh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, number four is the original Ghostbusters. Number three is Jaws, which I guess is a horror movie. I think a horror more is like the paranormal supernatural, but... Yeah, I guess it is a pretty scary movie. Um, number two is The Sixth Sense, which, really good film if you haven't seen it. Very good twist at the end. Um, but the number one highest growing horror film of all time is It, the 2017 version of It. Um, and I believe It Chapter 2 is actually in the top ten. So, if you like horror movies, It is and It Chapter 2 are good ones. This week, I thought I would talk about my favorite horror movie. Um, maybe not favorite, maybe like top five. But um, some people might not think that this is a horror movie. Um, but it's definitely a, <laughs> a spooky season movie. And some people might even say it's a Christmas movie as well. Um, I'm talking about The Nightmare Before Christmas. If you've never seen it, um, it's a clay claymation, is that what they call it? Clay animation, claymation, um, from Tim Burton, um, about Jack Skellington, the pumpkin king, discovering Christmas, and it's, it's one of my favorites that I watch, um, this time of year. But my question this week is, in The Nightmare Before Christmas, what is the name of the villain? So, um, I actually made my daughter into this character. I made her costume a couple of, was it two years ago? Two years ago, I made her costume and she was this particular villain. Um, and Nate was Jack Skellington and I was the love interest, Sally. Um, but we went as a trio, so we were the two main characters and Evie was the villain. Um, but was, what was the name of the villain? Now I'll tell you at the end of my segment. Two books you don't want to miss. Um, I know you're thinking I would probably have some uh, Chris, or Christmas. I'm not ready for Christmas yet. Some Halloween ones. But um, I actually went with a couple of new ones that I just got in. So my first one is Carolyn Brown's The Sawmill Book Club. Um, I picked this one because it is kind of different. And it is one that I've been hearing quite a bit about. Um, Carolyn Brown is a very, very good author. Um, if you like things that are not, you know, doesn't have filth in it, doesn't have, um, like, any kind of gore, or... It's just a very, very easy read. So, this says, Welcome to the Sawmill Book Club. Stick around and fall in love. Ooh. Unsure of the future, but ready for risks, Libby O'Dell trades big city life for whatever the back roads hold. In this case, it's a small community of Saul Mill, Texas, where Libby's taken a temporary job putting an antique store in order. Her new boss, Benny Taylor, a handsome charmer with a three-legged dog named Elvis, isn't a bad change of scenery either. 
Across the street, Benny's surrogate grandmothers, the widows Minna Lee and Opal, are ready for with homemade cornbread, sweet tea, and an invitation for Libby to join their book club. Even if it is mostly a gathering for local gossip and meddling, the ladies' main agenda is to find Benny a wife. Except, Benny's not looking, and Libby's only passing through until she decides what direction she's headed. The truth is, Sawmill is starting to feel pretty nice. Benny, even nicer. Time will tell if this meantime job in a stopover town is just what Libby's been looking for and where she belongs. So I thought that sounded like a nice little easy read. Um, like I said, nothing grotesque or filthy or anything. Carolyn Brown is a very good author. Um, my next one is a nonfiction. Um, it's actually a biography. I don't feature enough nonfiction, so I'm going to try to get some more in here. But this is a new one we just got in called The Story of a Heart. Two Families, One Heart, and the Medical Miracle that Saved a Child's Life by Dr. Rachel Clark. So I'm going to read you just a little bit. It's a riveting true story of two families linked by one heart, written by best-selling author and palliative care doctor Rachel Clark. One summer day, nine-year-old Kiera suffered a catastrophic injury in a car accident. As the rest of her body began to shut down, her heart continued to beat. In an act of extraordinary generosity, Kiera's parents and siblings agreed that she would have wanted to be an organ donor. Meanwhile, nine-year-old Max has been hospitalized for nearly a year with a virus that's causing his young heart to fail. When Max's parents received the call that they'd been hoping for, they knew it came at a terrible cost to another family. And what Clark calls the brutal arithmetic of the brutal arithmetic of transplant surgery. This is the unforgivable story of how one family's grief dis transformed into a life-saving gift. With tremendous compassion and clarity, Clark relates the urgent journey of Kira's heart and explores the history of the remarkable surgery that made it possible, stretching back over a century and involving the knowledge and dedication not just of surgeons but of countless nurses and technicians, immunologists, and paramedics. The story of a heart is a testament to compassion for the dying, the many ways we honor our relatives, and the tenacity of love. This sounds like something that would probably make me cry, um, but a good cry is not a bad thing um, every once in a while. But if you like a uplifting story, I guess part of it is uplifting. It, they're totally right. Um, when somebody gets a transplant, a life-saving transplant, that usually means that somebody else has lost someone in their lives. So um, sounds like a tearjerker to me, but if you like a good story with... Um, with some meaning. <laughs> the story of a heart would be for you. All right, upcoming programs at the library. So toddler time um, in, in October will be on the 7th, 14th, and 21st. Remember, we skipped the last week um, for because the library's got other stuff going on that day. Cook the book for October will be the 7th, so that will be next Monday. You still have time to get in and pick out a... Um, spooky big surprise recipe we're doing a halloween book for our cook the book in october so um you still have time to come in and pick out a recipe if you'd like to join cook the book on october 7th at 6 p.m our book club will be meeting they're reading the whisper network which um did i feature that last week i think i did um they will be meeting on the 19th at 10 a.m. here at the library for book club. If you do come to that, remember to come in the back door um, over by the shed. Um, that's just easier to get in and out for where we hold our book club. Um, instead of keeping the front door open, then we have people coming in to use the library when it's not really open. It's a whole thing. So if you come for book club, make sure that you go to the back door um, by the shed, by um, where I usually park. Um, after school programs for October, Tuesday the 15th will be 4th, 5th, and 6th grade. 16th will be 2nd and 3rd, and the 17th will be K-1. Um, yes, the, fifth, the 15th for my 4th, 5th, and 6th graders, they have requested food. Um, so we're going to be doing some light cooking. <laughs> so hopefully that makes them happy. They love it when we do food crafts. Um, our freezer meals for October... Um, the last day to sign up for those, let me get out my calendar and double check here. Um, so the last day to sign up for freezer meals would be the 18th of October. Um, however, November and, sorry, I dropped a bunch of stuff. However, we, you can still, um, sign up for November past that. 
but October and November are the last two that we're doing for the year. We skipped December just because of all the holidays and breakfast with Santa and we have so much other stuff going on. So we do skip December um, to October, November. Still available. Menus are up on our Facebook page. And last but not least, in October, of course, we are participating in Trick or Treat around the square. Um, you can find us up by the old Lifetime Dental Building um, in the Brothers Parking Brothers Market parking lot. Um, we'll be doing a trunk or treat style um, of trick or treating during that 3:30 to 5 o'clock on the 31st for trick or treat on the square. Um, I do have a patron question of the week, so I've had a few people ask about where to find our calendars, um, our events. So we have a giant calendar in our lobby with our events, our monthly events. We have some on our front desk that you can um, paper ones that you can take home. We also have it displayed on the front desk. We sent a um, a paper with the toddler times and after school program home with the kiddos from Sigourney's um, Elementary School. Um, but it is also on our website. You can go on our website under the events page and it will be under there. Or you can go to our Facebook page. We put everything on our Facebook page as well. So lots and lots of ways you can find events. Um, if there's something that you're interested in that you just can't find info on, just message me or stop in. We'll be happy to help you. All right, our question of the week. Who is the villain in the Nightmare Before Christmas movie? So love that movie, Tim Burton. Watch it every year. And my daughter was dressed as this two years ago. She was indeed Mr. Oogie Boogie. So he is um, the boogeyman in that show. Um, so Nightmare Before Christmas, the villain is Oogie Boogie. Love, love, love that movie. If you have a favorite Halloween movie or horror movie, put it in the comments below. Let me know because I'm always looking for a good movie to watch. That's all I have for you guys this week. I will see you next week.